Porsche of Las Vegas. This is Steve. Yeah, I have an old convertible Porsche. You guys interested? Absolutely. It's perfect. All original. Looks like a turbo, you know, from the factory. Great. Bring it over. Oh, uh, no. You gotta come see it at my warehouse. It's been in there for a while. I thought this was going to be an easy slam dunk preservation project. All we had to do was fix the deck lid, put the right wheels on it, put a new convertible top on it, and we'd be home free. Then I checked the VIN number and found out how much trouble we were in. When the Turbo 930 came out, it was the coolest car. Everybody wanted one, and lots of people were welding on these big fenders to these small bodied cars that never had them. Suddenly it was really fashionable to have a wide Porsche. I think Porsche absolutely saw what people were doing and said, hey, we want to be in on this. So Porsche offered a naturally aspirated 911 that looked like a turbo, but wasn't. They called it the M491. We drove to a warehouse. In the back of this place was a 1986 convertible whale tail wide body 911. I looked at Steve and I said, are you sure? And Steve looked right back at me and said, yeah, man. <laughs> We've been participating in the Classic Restoration Challenge since the very beginning. So every year we think, hey, we've learned a lot. We know how to do this. And every year we have plans. And as a lot of you probably know, that if you want to see God laugh, just make a plan. There was a time in the not so distant past where people were doing awful things to these Porsches in the name of fashion and style. The rear spoiler looked awful on our car and chrome may have been in fashion in 1995, but it's definitely not now. This car was the physical embodiment of everything people did wrong in the 80s and 90s. When do I get into the top? You know, you told me not to talk about the top. This particular car that we're restoring, it turns out, was not at all what we thought it was. The team comes to me and says, you know, um, I know we had a plan here. The good news is, we thought we had to put a new cabriolet top on it. Yeah, we don't need that. Uh, the bad news is, uh, she was born as a Targa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a harder one than we thought. Um, There's no chance some genius would have cut the top off the car. Can we just once not have any surprises? Yeah, somebody got the bright idea that they could just use a Sawzall and chop the Targa bar off and bolt on a convertible top. Even the owner who had the car for more than 20 years had no idea the car was originally a Targa. Plus, it was also an M470 car, which means it originally had no spoiler. In 1986, there were a total of seven wide-body Targas built without spoilers. This is one of those cars. It's kind of like chopping the horn off a unicorn to make a horse. We knew we had to bring it back to life, but it wasn't gonna be easy. Which made the project far more extensive, but interestingly enough, we'll end up with a car that was far, far more rare. Okay, so the importance of installing the Targa bar correctly is massive because if we are off millimeters anywhere, then the glass and the seals and the Targa bar will never line up and look proper. Once we weld that thing on, if it's not right, what are we supposed to do, cut it off again? I was watching when they were welding and I was honestly worried at the same time. I was very confident because the ability of our team and the measurements and the process and the time they took to ensure that everything was proper was just incredible. Plus, the parts team was scouring the Originale catalogs from Porsche to find all of the parts we needed for this car. We love when we find out that Porsche still makes the part because we know we're getting the best quality possible for the car. Going into this with our team, I knew we had this. I'm super happy with the way the cars come out. I don't think anybody would be able to tell that it wasn't a Targa before. The best Porsche is a Porsche that's still the way it was born, that's still completely the way it came off the assembly line. And I think this particular project really brings that to life when you consider that somebody took a car that at one time was wearing the suit it was born in and took those clothes off of it and put on a completely different set of clothes. And I think um, our team is having a lot of fun putting this car back in its birthday suit. There, there's some things about the past that just can't be fixed, but this is one thing we can.